Hey, what's up guys? How y'all doing today? Um, Welcome to another episode of CSI Tisa. Y'all, I said I've been investigating. I said I've been doing the research, right? I said I've been working hard for y'all, but first let me actually turn my microphone on so I can give you some smooth listening. You guys, we have 100% found all right. One of Diddy's, according to them, rumored blank workers. Now, I have receipts. I have video. I have interviews where he outlines everything. I have what it is to actually investigate, to actually research, to actually not sit on YouTube all day like a vulture, looking at everybody's stuff so you could turn around and try to make it seem. I y'all know I got receipts. Now listen, let me walk y'all through it, okay? Because it is good. And I want to actually say this in all seriousness. This interview is super chilling. It will actually scare you. And when you look at what Diddy's involved in, I really do think all jokes aside, I think that it explains why he's gotten away with so much for so long, what's going on. And there is, dare I say, a lot of conspiracy in this. A lot of conspiracy. Y'all, this is going to be a live. If you need to put a deep conditioner in your hair, I would suggest you do it now. If you got a long drive, I suggest you do it now. If you are mad at your significant others, this will, this will be the perfect time to pop in those ear pods and just literally let the world go. If your boss is getting on your nerves, pop them in. He ain't talking about nothing. He ain't never. The kids are hungry. Give them some Oreos. Baby, this is going to be a long live, right? And listen. This is going to be a long live. Now, let's get into this. Should we just start with the video or do we want to do a thing? You know what? Let's actually do a little precursor. All right? Let's do a little precursor. Because I realize people don't think that research, that putting together things, because we all Nancy Drew in this B, right? Ain't nobody taking my stuff and not crediting me, right? Which is the simplest thing. No, we all Nancy Drew. We're all coming to the same conclusion at the same time, right? You, me, them, and her. We're all coming to the same conclusion, right? Oh my God, guys, it's mod, it's mod. I just woke up. We all coming to the same conclusion. Ain't that right? Y'all listen, let me just say this, okay? Because we all Nancy Drew. I know a lot of y'all were like, Tisa, do more lives, Tisa, do more lives. And for a while I stopped doing lives because I was like, you know, mama wants to live life. I be, I be filming when I feel like it. But you know who you can thank for me coming back? Thank the vulture, the one vulture that's been stealing my, taking my stuff, right? The male YouTubers get credit. Me, I do research. I do investigation byline. Uh, but you think I, I don't demand respect? But let's give a shout out to the vault. Thank the vultures. For the vulture, one, for the reason I'm back on live. Because I know it's, it's fun. I actually like it. But thank the vultures for the reason I'm back on live. And I know I said last night live I was going to come back on because I have receipts for the worker. But then I sit there and I said, you know what? We all, since we all got sociology degrees, right? Let me conduct a little experiment, right? Let me sit there and think. If I post something like clockwork, you were going to snatch that stuff like a goddamn hyena and post it. And it's just like, you know what? I get it. I get it. I get it. We all talk about current events. But for somebody to sit there and act like the stuff I put out, is some trending article or something everybody was thinking about. No, 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 no. You went a step further. And made it seem like you just woke up and five hours after I posted, you what? You what? Oh, my God, it's my guys. I just woke up and I just decided this. Did you? Did you really? And I said, you know what? Since we own some Nancy Drew mess, since everybody is talking about the same things, we're all going to come to the same conclusions. I said, you know what? Let me just shut up and fold my arms. And let me just see. That if I don't come up a new angle or I don't drop something, let me see what you got. Let me see what you're going to do. Since we're all guys, oh my God, it's shocking guys. We're all on the same vibe. What you got? What you going to post? 
nothing. You've been on a Beyonce mute challenge, waiting for me to drop another crumb. Oh, I get it. There's a lot in the public domain. And you guys, it's all in the public domain. Okay, is it? But that's what investigation is. And you're right, everything's in a public domain. Everything. So since everything's in a public domain, if I sit on mute, I guess you'll find somebody else's channel scavenge off of y'all listen. I get it. Male bloggers, you, mm. But anyway, let me get to my point, right? But I prove my point. I sit on mute. And it's like, it's all in, oh my God, you guys, it's all in the public domain. Yes, I know what the public domain is called. It's called my YouTube channel. Yes, yes, it's called your notifications. It's set on my YouTube channel. That's what it is. Yes, we all know what the public domain is. YouTube.com, where you do all your research. But you know what? I digress because baby, this is the king that was promised. This is a story that was promised yesterday. Let me shut up and actually get to the point. Cause I know y'all don't care, but I just had to have my fun since we own some Scooby-Doo, Nancy Drew. You guys, it's so, it's so obvious. People think the same things, right? Your friend and you. What's your friend's name? What's your friend's name? Big Pin? Trapper Keeper Notebook? What's your friend? You and your friend or some Nancy Drew, Scooby-Doo. Me and my friend, guys, that you and your friends, are y'all going to research this too? Your friend is called My Notifications. Anyway, y'all, let's get into this, all right? Let's get into this, all right? Um, uh, Listen, it, it, it is what it is. It is what it is. Okay, right? Let's get into this. So I need to set this up for you guys, all right? Wait for the few of y'all to get in uh, to the room. Okay, so we found the video. We found the video of one of Diddy's blank workers. But it's a weird story how I found the video. And I gotta tell y'all. And yes, y'all gonna mind, if you wanna mind my content, you know who I'm talking to. I'm gonna make you work for a baby. It's Easter eggs. I'm hiding stuff left, right, and a third is gonna be a long live, all right? So get ready for this. I'm gonna make you work for this. I know you pray and I start doing eight minute videos. So you only have to listen to my voice for eight minutes, but baby, this is going to be a long live because I got some receipts. Okay. So forget all that, right? Let's get into this. Okay. So I've been investigating a lot. That's another reason why I pulled back from the upload schedule because I really wanted to focus on some things. I've been chasing after people, shaking trees, going through archive footage. It's been taking a long time. I'm not going to lie, but it's been rewarding, right? And I finally had a breakthrough. We found the guy that Diddy had to freak off with, okay? This man, I'm gonna show y'all the video, and it's a long video. This man, it's like a 10 minute video. This man also says that, and again, it appears to be legit. Do you know why? So just to let you know, I've actually been holding on to this and I've actually been afraid to actually post it because it's really, really chilling. Now, and the funny thing is what motivated me to post it is uh, Tough News. Y'all know his channel, right? He put, y'all sent me the clip where he posted a video saying that Diddy settled with a man in 2017. Now, before y'all start, it's not the same man. It's not. This is completely different. This happened in 2014. Tough Sky happened in 2017, and I believe it happened in Atlanta. But that's not the point. The point of the matter is, in the video, Tough News sources independently verified this story that I've been researching. Independently verified and placed Diddy in Miami in 2014. And once I got that verification, because that's the way I do my research cross, like, okay, so this person saying this, I got this evidence. If I can get another independent source to verify, yo, this might be true. So in the video, it's like, okay, the guy settled 2017, blah, blah, blah. This guy was supposed that settled in that video was supposed to be from the Atlanta area. As soon as I heard that, that's like, okay, this isn't the same guy, but it placed Diddy again in Miami in 2014. You need to remember that because this is important. Now, when I show you this video and it's coming and I need to tell you guys the backstory so you can understand it about why it's so shocking. This man got into some trouble in the law. He was basically driven insane. Driven insane by the stuff that he had to do and the stuff that he saw. And he talked about it. He talked about it. 
in a police interview, a police actual interview that was taped, that I dug through footage, right? Sources, whatever. My sources do like to remain anonymous, but I also like to shake trees and actually get sources and make sure that these sources are viable, okay? I do wanna say one thing, Diddy has maintained his innocence. This has not been independently verified. This is his story as he told the police, okay? I have the video. This has not been independently verified. Diddy has maintained that he is innocent in a court of law. He says he will fight for his family, his honor, his reputation, and all that mess, okay? Now, here's the chilling part. As you guys watch the video, as you watch the video, there's one thing that I want you to keep in mind. This is the police interview. Everything the man's saying, if you listen to Cassie's complaint and read Cassie's complaint, right? Everything this man is saying can be verified in Cassie's complaint. All right, let's get this up on the screen. Y'all ready for this? Are y'all ready for this? Don't tell me I don't be researching for y'all. Don't tell me I don't be doing the thing for you guys. I had settlement with Sean. Hold on. Don't tell me I don't be doing things for y'all guys and researching and getting angles that nobody else gets. And baby, it's okay because y'all recognize the real and it's all good. It's all good. It's all good. But I'm telling these mofos tread lightly. Okay. So this, everything this man is saying was verified by Cassie's lawsuit. Okay. Listen to what he has to say. This man was driven crazy like this. This is not clickbait. This is not BS. It's the real deal. I'm going to walk y'all through it. It's a long video. I got receipts in it. And then we are going to talk about the emails that my sources sent me actually verifying it. Baby, let's go. Let's go. This is part of the conversation that we're all publicly getting to. Anyway, let's get into this. Hold on. Let me just rewind it. Okay. Y'all ready? Sound up, everybody. Let's go. Okay, let's go. Um, I had settlement with Sean, okay? And he belongs to that agenda. That's why he's so famous. They land all the contracts. It's his attorneys, which are Mark Garagos and... Really quick, not to interrupt, just to let you guys know, he's talking about... He's opening up saying that he had a settlement with Sean. Sean, he calls him Diddy. He calls him Puffy, okay? And he's talking about the settlement. I should have queued that up, right? But let's go again, okay? The contracts, it's his attorneys, which are Mark Garagos and Ben Mercedes. Okay. Listen, I'm about to tell y'all who this is. Can we just please have a little bit of drama? Just listen. Now, first thing he said, his attorneys, Mark Garrigo and Ben Macedas, okay? He says that he settled with them. Again, this is all around 2014. P. Diddy was free from felony charges. This was in 2015. Upon learning the DA's decision, Diddy's lawyer, Mark Garrigo, said in the statement, we're thankful that the district attorney rejected, right? There's more linking Diddy to Mark Garrigo's, okay? I'm going to take. Prosecutors won't pursue felony charges against Sean Diddy Combs, right? They said criminal charges should have never been bought. We're thankful that the district attorney regretted. As you guys know, there's been a long history. You guys just rock with me. This is all going to come together, okay? As you guys know, there's been a really, really long history with Diddy doing mess and getting away with it almost like there's no charges. He's actually seemed untouchable. The most notable was, one, when he did the H-Town stomp on Drake's face outside a club story, I believe in 2014, Drake had to go to the hospital. That's how bad it was. Let's also not forget the other thing that Mark Garagos actually defended him in. Prosecutors won't pursue felony charges against Sean Diddy Combs, 
Let's not forget that he tried to crack open Justin's football coach's head at UCLA with a kettlebell, all because he didn't like the way the coach was talking to Justin in practice. When charges were filed, let's not forget that the DA, right? Let's not forget that the DA chose not to press charges because his good old attorney that this man just talked to was uh, Mark Garagos. But let's continue. Turn the sound up, y'all. We are going somewhere, and I swear to God, when we get to the end of this, you're going to feel like you just sat through watching The Sixth Sense with Bruce Willis for the first time. When I tell you there is an MF and plot twist that y'all don't see coming, there's a plot twist you don't see coming. Hold on. Okay. Ben Mercedes worked for Bad Boy Entertainment for four years and worked for Hillary Rodman for five. Okay. When I I take charge of the threat of death on me, okay? I don't have it, but I can make it available under secrecy. That means that I wouldn't be liable because I don't want to be getting brain for anything, okay? Right. Um, I had sex with Cassie and Sean. Basically, he would, basically he would, uh, he would tell me what to do with Cassie. I had like 15 encounters and I heard lots of business because what they would do is Sean talks a lot on the, on the phone and on the TV with speakers and stuff and I would be in the, I was like a slave, okay? For them, that's what I was, that's all. Okay, so just to let you guys know, the audio does jump. I'm going to put the full link to this video in my description box, the full uncut link after this live. You hear the video jump, but that's because he says, right, in case you missed that, he just claimed that he was a blank slave for Diddy. Now, I cut out blank slave because you know YouTube is one of my biggest haters, right? The algorithm be like, that ain't PG-13, right? He literally said, he claimed that he was a blank slave for Diddy and Cassie. And that Diddy would diddle himself, right? While instructing him on what to do with Cassie, okay? And right. while he was doing that, um, I he her. would... And I came back and I seen him for the reason and won. But they didn't want, did Mark Eros and Ben Mercedes were his attorneys, okay? And Christopher Leon's here was my attorney. They asked me to turn in that, which was the video recording, and I did so. Okay, so slow it down. You guys can rewind it, okay? Just in case you're not following this. He says that he had a settlement with Diddy. He says that he can produce the tape if they want, because it's secret. And because they have a settlement, he's not allowed to talk about it, okay? The settlement laws and NDAs have changed, but back then, if you spoke about it, they could sue you, you had to go back. He said that he's kept tapes, right? There was one recording in particular. Diddy paid him to have blank with him and Cassie, right? I know you think you know where this is going. He looks crazy because he went insane. I'm going to tell you all the backstory to that, but also the plot twist. But I just want to make sure you guys are following this, okay? He would have blank with Diddy and Cassie. This guy is not a fake. He's not a fraud. At least in my opinion, I'm going to tell y'all why. Y'all going to see the receipts. He said that Diddy would diddle with him, right? While... He was telling the guy what to do with Cassie, right? And then he would, uh, Diddy would be on the phone conducting business while it happens. Now, I'm going to wait to tell you this guy's name, but I do want to let you know that he worked for a very, very, very popular escort service in the South Florida, Miami area. I'm going to tell you the name of the escort service in a minute, but he worked there. 
Okay, he was driven crazy. All right, I know this ain't his best day, but he was driven crazy. We're about to put this back on because there's more. That escort agency was known for being paid to have blank relations with women while the men watched. This guy was 100% known for working with them. He says it to the police in the investigation. This is a videotape confession, by the way. Didn't I tell y'all that he got driven crazy? This is the videotaped confession. I know y'all think y'all know where it's going, but it's going someplace even better, okay? I can't wait for the plot twist. I know I gotta get to it, but this plot twist is gonna be so good. Even when I saw the plot twist, I was like, oh, my heart jumped, okay? So again, this guy has seen better days, but this is a police confession from him being di driven crazy. Listen to what he says about Diddy, Cassie, Mark Garagos. So now he's telling them what he was supposed to do. He's saying, he's gonna say how many times it was taped and Mark Garagos and Diddy paid him to settle. I got receipts, how much they paid him to settle, but also about this tape, right? They're looking for this tape. And he's talking about how they're trying to get to it. Hold on. This is an actual police uh, interrogation, confession. It actually is, he confessed, but it's interrogation. I'll tell you what he's being interrogated for. All right. Didn't I tell you this mofo was driven crazy? Hold on. They gave him back to Mexico, and it's possible I, I threw everything out. It's possible I can produce a copy. Gotcha. It's possible. I'm not sure. Now, I put blinks in here. Now, tell, tell me, though, uh, how all of that led up to Thursday night, Friday morning. Well, I've what been trying, you? I've been trying. My settlement put me in a box. Basically, I couldn't talk because I was going to be sued. So I let it be, but they've been following me, and they've had, Mark Garrick has had uh, the FBI on me, has had other department, other agencies looking at me and spying on me, okay? Because they want to set me up as an extortionist. Like if I was extorting Sean for money, it's wrong. Basically what happened is, Diddy and Ross, which they're good buddies, okay? Mm -hmm. they, they, they're they gay. Who? Both, Diddy and Ross, and Cabot. They're Listen to what the tea he's spilling. Hold on, just listen to the tea and then I'll explain how it works together. Listen to this. He just name checked Diddy, Rick Ross, and DJ Khaled. Hold on. Okay. okay. DJ Khaled, Rick Ross, yeah. and P. Diddy? Yeah. They're all gay? Yeah. Gotcha. Now, you you go you know I had to go. This is around the time that Diddy was in the Miami area. You know I had to get pictures. Now I'm not saying that Diddy was ricking ricky's ross i am saying these pictures exist and i just wanted everybody to see them okay that was just a little something i threw in there you know listen looks friendly to me listen sharing is caring okay we're going to get back into the, the interview so rock agenda okay is basically binge drinking poured out on a yacht they promote binge drinking and drugs so he's talking about the Chirac experience. Keep in mind when you listen to this, what Mark Curry said, right? What Mark Curry said, what a lot of people have said, they had different bottles for the people that were partying and the people that weren't. For the party favors and for the people enjoying the party favors. And I'm talking about the humans they bought as party favors. He calls this a Chirac experience. He said that it always happened on a yacht. They promoted liquor and they promoted illicit sustenance. Let's keep going. Gotcha. Um, the hip hop agenda. Mm -hmm. um, basically, what happens is following. The hip hop agenda is an agenda to move drugs all over the United States. They move. You need to inform the DEA. They they move all the dope. Okay, all the dope on private jets, which don't get screened by, by uh, 
By customs? By, by the, yeah, anybody? the okay. Inside the United States, okay? They, they move what's called high-grade powdered MA. They move cocaine and they move uh, liquid cocaine in their bottles too. Okay, so they put the liquid cocaine in the bottles and they move. All right, pause. Again, It's I'm going to put the full interview in there. This isn't like Frankenstein. I'm just bleeping out the words that I know YouTube is going to probably pull this live down if they hear me see. He said that the hip hop agenda is they put liquid powdered sugar, powdered sugar, please figure it out, right? And also Molly. He's saying MDMA. Now, they put that in bottles and the other stuff they put on private jets. And he's saying that with Diddy, what they did is in the bottles, put in liquid, move that in big shipments and also pack private jets with MD and all this other stuff because they know that they can get past customs and they can get past the airport, right? Now, just to let you guys know, all of this happening was between 2012, 2014. I did a little research and we can place Diddy at the scene. Rick Ross and Sean Diddy Combs attend Sean Diddy's Chirac New Year's Eve party at his home on December 31st, 2013 in Miami Beach. Just to let you know, that was the same party that Diddy allegedly Diddy bopped all over Drake's face. They said it was because Drake was trying to talk to Cassie. Then later on, they found out that Diddy just felt disrespected because they were performing and Drake dropped his mic that wasn't working on the phone, a floor and grabbed Diddy's mic out of his hand. And he was like doing this and Diddy felt so disrespected. Again, this is what the streets are saying, right? But it's in blogs too. Diddy felt so um, disrespected that he, uh, when he saw Drake again, in Miami, I believe it was that story in Miami, or it might have been a, at Live in the Fountain Blue in Miami. He literally went in, punched Drake straight in his face at least three times. It was so bad, Drake had to go to the hospital. No charges, nothing. It was swept under the rug. I say this because it actually comes back into play in the story later, so I just want you guys to pay attention to this. We are placing him at the scene of the crime. Um, again... 2014, Diddy hosts Chirac, the new year 2014, at his private Miami estate, okay? Let's all not forget he was traveling back and forth by private jet. June two, uh, 19, 2014, Mace and Diddy were at Story. I'm bringing up all this to show that Diddy was basically living in Florida between the years of 2012, 2014, where this man, I will give his name, is alleging that all this happened. But the plot twist isn't here yet, right? Again, Diddy 2012, live in Miami. This is where he actually started moving distribution for his liquor company, um, Chirac. And it was moving all across the country. It blew up very quickly, even though people said, I've never seen Chirac in my bar. Why do I bring this up? Because this guy is alleging, and I will give you all his credentials later, he is alleging that Diddy actually used Chirac as a front to move my NBA liquid coca. Listen, you heard it, right? Also, this is Diddy himself doing advertising. Again, Chirac's value and the money it got went sky high super quickly, even though it wasn't even in any local bars. Again, I'm not saying it's season one of the Ozarks. But I wouldn't be surprised as it was. I seen the liquid coke. I drank it myself. Having sex with Diddy and Cassie. Oh, I forgot. Okay. To get one. Hold like on. Let me. Okay. So he's about to say, I videotaped myself having blank with Diddy and Cassie. That's the intro. Let's go. He's about to get into it. I don't want to over talk him. Let's go. I seen the liquid coke. I drank it myself. Having sex with Diddy and Cassie. Okay, it's not good. He drinks it all the time. All right, he calls it GG. That's liquid cocaine. Okay. I get, I get all that. Right. You're gonna need, a, you're gonna need an internet so I can show you. If I show you the website, you're just gonna go like, oh. Okay, now he said I videoed myself having blank with Diddy and Cassie. 
right? I drank, I know for a fact it's in those bottles because I drank it while I was having blank with Diddy, Diddy and Cassie, the liquid blank. And he said, Sean, that's what he calls him, drinks it too. And, and he drinks it while we have blank, but he's not good because he drinks too much. Now, just to let you know, this is paragraphs 57 and 58 from Cassie's lawsuit. This is also in the early years. She is starting from 2008, moving throughout the bulk of her relationship with Diddy. She actually said in this, again, it has not been independently verified. This is just Cassie giving her version of against. Diddy has maintained his innocence. None of this has been proven uh, uh, in court, but since it hasn't been proven in court, I have it upon information and belief based on the police interrogation, Cassie's report, talking to numerous sources, and also blogs that I pieced together from 2001 all the way up to 2018 that upon information and belief that I should actually share this with you. Cassie in paragraphs 57 and 58 of her complaint, if you don't remember, said, compounding this all-encompassing intrusion into our life, Mr. Combs, that is Diddy, secured his control over the young and impressionable Mrs. Ventura by introducing her to blank, a blank, a illicit substance fueled lifestyle that kept her complacent and compliant. Now, we all know, well, Okay, we don't all know I had to Google it, right? This purple, purple, let's fall down with this purple, purple. Okay, right? We have all known from our Google searches that liquid coca keeps it, which is what they call scissor, 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 right? This purple, I gotta stay fly. Ah, 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 ah. They call me the bed. Who want to do three six mafia? I feel like we are friends, and we should all go out to karaoke because we will tear some three six mafia up. I'm gonna be Jason Juicin, MGK. Uh, okay, fine, right? Um, so we all know that liquid coca, or as people like it, scissor scissor scissor, keeps people complacent and compliant. They said Diddy first introduced uh, Cassie to opiates around 2008 and would often have blanks and other uh, blanks in the open like ca uh, candy. Upon information and belief, Diddy has been addicted to prescription blanks and, well, I guess I can say that, painkillers and took ecstasy, which is MDNA, MDNA frequently. Let's also not forget that he said that Diddy's private jets that he, around this time, was bragging that he had bought his own private jet. Some are saying that Ron Burkle, I'll do another video about that mofo because I found out more information, is the one that helped him with this funding. You wonder why somebody at this point that's only worth a few hundred million would spend 65 of that to get a private jet. Let's also not forget that once you buy the private jet, let's also not forget you have to pay for fuel. You have to pay for fuel, even to go on a short ride. That's like what? 35,000 in fuel, 15,000 in fuel, 25. When you got a private jet, it is not cheap to have at all. I wonder why somebody at this point whose total value is around 200 million would spend almost half of that on a jet that required substantial maintenance. I don't know. This gentleman, who I will explain later after this, is contending that Diddy's jet was used to move around boatloads of MDNA, better known as X, right? Molly, whatever you want. And also that in the Chirac bottles, it was actually filled with and it was moving all around the country and they didn't have to worry. Now, again, this hasn't been independently verified, but take that for what you will, because maybe there's more to this. Let's get back into this. At first, Cassie was given the prescriptions that Diddy received from a doctor in Miami, Florida. Eventually, when Diddy exhausted his supply, he demanded that Cassie procure prescriptions uh, from his, this Miami doctor in her own name. Now, why do I bring that up? It's one more piece of evidence to actually show that Cassie and Diddy were at that time living in Miami. This man was stationed in South Florida. He did all his work as an escort and a stripper. Yes, he was a stripper, right? 
He did all his work as an escort. And don't look at him now in that interview. He's seen better days. You know how it is when the feds come. And also, he did go insane from all of this, okay? But he was a dancer and a stripper in the South Florida, Miami area. Again, we have no way of knowing if he is telling the truth. I am just giving you different data points that I have researched and giving you the different data points because the first thing you have to do to actually see if there's a connection is place somebody at the scene of the crime and make it more likely than not that even if you cannot pinpoint the specific day it happened because you were consistently in the scene, because you were consistently in that area, well, it makes it more likely than not that him saying that he had access to you. And in his point, oh, I don't want to ruin it. Let's keep going. Hold on. I don't want to ruin it. Hold on. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. All right. Uh, help me understand you. Uh, how old are you? I'm 42. I've been through all my life. Okay. I've had a great life. I've settled five, four point one two five million dollars with Diddy. Okay. okay. Was he scared that I was exposed? I don't want to talk about. So he said that he settled for Diddy with four point two, actually almost five million dollars, because he was scared because he settled with me, okay? Now, up until this point, everything he's saying lines up perfectly. Well, what is in Cassie's legal documents as to what happened and how they happened with the F-offs, at the freak-offs, everything. But listen to this, he's talking about the way Diddy was scared and he settled. I'm about to read the super comments. Diddy right now, I'm gonna talk about you, help me. Okay, how did I get independent? evidence again i'm not gonna leak what this person was investigated with because everybody not everybody only one person that be watching my mess doing like literally copying off my math homework since it's all oh my god you guys it's mad it's mad it's public domain bitch get this shit off of public domain then since we all doing nancy Drew shit i did my fucking homework go ahead and show your work but i got you it's gonna be a little lag a three four five hour lag because you can download and copy my homework again right Anyway, right? Um, anyway, this alleged person who was a gunman went from dead broke to a property buying spree in over a month. This is when what this guy said really, really, really started to be like, oh my God, this is when honestly I started to get chills in my spine. Because honestly, you know me, I hear a lot of stuff. People always DM me stuff, this and that. Like, I hear a lot of stuff, right? And, you know, you got to be careful about, like, what source you trust or even, like, what you repeat. Because sometimes people might be trying to give you false information. Sometimes they might try to be set, set you up. You know me. I'm, like, a little paranoid sometimes, right? And I'd like to have at least three points of not confirmation. But whenever I hear any story, I like there to be three independent data points that make it more likely than not that, are you telling the truth? Well, I wasn't there, there's no way I can tell. But there are three sets of independent uh, data that can kind of place you in the scene, which to me makes it more likely than not that there might be something. But let's get into this, because a prominent newspaper in the area actually wrote an article on this man about what happened around the time that the settlement that he alleges that Diddy settled with them actually happened. I'm gonna read you a little bit of it. I would put it on, I'm, and also I'm gonna link this full video in its entirety because baby, it gets deep. He goes into some crazy stuff and that's when I was like, okay, I'm, I'm getting a little scared. I'm getting a little freaked out. But let me read you what this article said. Independently, they, it said, Sorry, where are we? Where is the article? Ah, here we go. It said his marriage dissolved. This was around in 2014, okay? When it dissolved, he basically had a net worth of negative $1,800. He had a negative balance, all right? J.P. Morgan Chase was about to close his bank account. He had a negative balance. However, within a month of him claiming that Diddy had settled with him, all right? He was only making actually in his job, and this has been verified by the police, he was making in his job about 2,000 a month 
Okay. He was self, uh, uh, he was self-employed and he even went to try to get filed bankruptcy in the Miami day court. So he even certified to a bankruptcy judge that he only had a negative 1800. He has never been involved in any tra uh, drug trade. He hasn't been involved in anything illegal, money on the street that might help him get up. But less than a month after this, okay, he launched a buying spree of distressed properties. He spent 765000 on each five properties over a two-month period. This is according to Miami-Dade property records. And get this, the records show that none of the properties that he purchased, he didn't use a mortgage for any of them. He paid cash. Tell me how the F, somebody, that had before they settled, a month before they alleged they settled with Diddy because they had a tape of the F off, of the freak off, a month a month before they settled, right? You had negative 1800 in your bank account. You certified to a court in the Miami Dade County that you had less than 1800. You had negative 1800. You owed the bank $1,800, right? You know how the bank does too. You know, when you have like rent to pay, they just like, mm -mm, you 10 cents short and they bounce that check. Let you have rent but you just swiping like you crazy at like the Starbucks getting venti lantes. They will literally hit you with overdraft fees for what? 30, I'm sure overdraft fees, 30, 40, $50 for each latte that you buy. You'll be at the company vending machine just getting some chips. And every time you hit the chips, they let them go for 65 cents and then hit you with an overdraft. So I was like, wow, how, mu how much were you at Starbucks just hitting your card up? Because they'll let you go for a little bit amount so they can tag you up. But the big amounts, so they're like, mm -mm, we're we not paying your car. No, we're not paying rent. The point of the matter, how the F did you go from a month before? Now, do we have any proof that the settlement occurred? Well, we have this gentleman's contention that the settlement occurred. Do we have any other points of evidence that more likely than not would lead us to believe that maybe there was a settlement? Again, he was in the negative 1800 in the bank account. A month after he settled, he launched, and I quote, I will give my sources, right? But since we're all, oh, it's mod, mod, Nancy Drew, let's see you do your homework too, right? Right? Okay. But he, he went from doing that to purchasing five separate properties at 65, two, I'm sorry, 765,000 each over a two month period. According to Miami Dade property records, this can be verified, right? Again, none of the properties were purchased with a mortgage. They were all cash purchases. This newspaper goes so far as to say what we're all thinking. And this is a write-up on his arrest. So where did a blank who was worse than flat broke in August 2014 acquire enough cash in September 2014 to start buying properties with cash? Y'all think there was a settlement? I don't know. He wasn't involved in moving weight. He wasn't involved in anything illegal. Oh, baby, after he got arrested, the police did a thorough background check. So where did he get the money from? Maybe he got it from the settlement he's alleging. Um, okay, so... He then sold the properties 18 months uh, within 18 months to two years for total. Okay, fine. Let me read some of these super chats. Then we're going to get back into uh, the video because he does even more. There's more evidence, right? There, so where did it, listen, so where did it get it, right? Hold on, y'all. Let's get past this. Let's get past this. Okay, so hold on. Let me read some of these super chats because I got a lot. And then we're going to get, hey, B, what's up? Thank you so much for the super sticker. Tisha Edwards, thank you for joining the channel. Let me put this on the summer drawing screen. Tisha Edwards, thank you. Um, Valentine, thank you so much for the super chat. You said so glad to catch you again. Great commentary. Always on point. B, thank you for blessing me again. One time to stop. Uh. Uh, what's up? Hey, what's up? Uh, Natalie Maha, thank you so much for the super sticker. Hey, what's up? 
y'all, we have the Jaguar White Johnson. What's up? What's up, Queen? What's up, Jaguar? How y'all doing today? Relentless Aaron, what's up? Thank you for blessing me. Said so we appreciate your energy and gumption, match with wit and research. My book, The Night Puff Tried to Kill Me, is now available. Also, Surviving Diddy Books releases December 27th. Y'all, please show Relentless Aaron some love. The book, The Night Puff Tried to <clears throat> Me, is available now and surviving Diddy will be released December the 27th. Relentless Aaron, I think you need to bring your relentless cell phone to the channel. Also, the homegirl healer, thank you for joining and becoming a member. I want to give a shout out to Carolyn Molina, said eventually your research will, your research will reap its value. Oh, thank you. You're a gifted journalist. Keep going. You know, I love y'all. That's why I ride so hard for y'all because y'all be riding with me too. Thank you so much. Um, Rebecca said, love your content. Um, Lizette Sanchez, thank you so much for the super chat. Rebecca, thank you and send in love right back. Angeline Alexander said, you're awesome. You have me sitting on the edge of my seat. Thank you so much, Angeline. We're doing a little commercial individual uh, intervention because mama got bills to pay. Jay Mendes, thank you so much for the super chat. Rudy, thank you so much for the super chat. Jordan Ho, Ho Oi, Jordan, uh, is it Ho? I was about to say Ho. Um, Jordan Oi, thank you so, or is it Joy? Y'all know me and my uh, reading skills. Thank you so much for the super chat, Jordan. Hey, really quick, Latri La uh, Latoria Foster, thank you so much for the super sticker. Valentine TD said, you're the bomb diggity, my friend. Thank you so much for blessing me twice, Valentine. Bella Noir, thank you so much for joining the channel. We almost to the end of this. Lavon Lavani Williams, look at that smile. Thank you so much for the super sticker. Relentless Aaron said, Hell of a stream here. Bring up receipts. I can write another book, Tees. I can't wait to talk to you. I know that's right. You the truth. Let's bring the noise. Surviving Diddy drops December 27th. And the the night puff tried to blank me. Available now. Godspeed. Y'all need to pick up that book. Y'all know I'm going to cop it and do a book review just because I know this juice. Also, Emma, my high grace, thank you so much for joining this uh, the channel. Nana Paul says, thank you, Tisa. Your content is the best. Stay safe while covering Diddy's Dirty Deeds. I'm not going to lie, y'all. Y'all always be telling me to stay safe, and y'all know me. I'd be like, ah, ah, safe for what? Y'all know me. But honestly, when I tell you the plot twist on this, it is going to chill you to the bone. All right? We also have... Erica Ballard, thank you so much for joining the uh, joining the channel. And Maggie Battles, woo, welcome to y'all. Listen, we squat deep. Also, Beauty Inspire, thank you so much for following and joining the channel. All right, we squat squat deep up in this. Can I curse on YouTube? Let me not chance it because you know YouTube gonna be like. Pull it down. We squat deep up in this mug, right? My mom might be watching. Let me not start using profanity. Okay, let's get back to this mess. Let me roll it back so we don't miss a word of what this man is saying because y'all, woo, where's he at? Uh, da, da, da. Before you go on. Before you go, what is everything? What did, what, did, what did you, when you say you threw away everything, what's my, that? My documents, everything I have, because I know they've been trying to follow me. And I, I just don't want, I just don't, he's going to be shot at by them. And he's a witness that Ross came and threatened me at my house, post-settlement. After we settled, did he send Ross and I asked him to go see that was Ross and confirmed the daddy. So, so... Gonzalez, uh, he can back up what you're saying about yeah. Pity, P. Diddy and yeah. Ross and all that? Okay, yeah. all right. Um, and you said Gonzalez didn't know anything about... So where's he at now? And again, I'm moving around. I just want to give you... He said that earlier, if you guys don't remember, he said that he settled for... First of all, he said that Diddy gave him the herp. Now, I don't know if that's true. And I'm not standing by that statement. OK, I do not know anything about that man's health. I do not know what's going on. But that is the basis for which he is alleging he so did he. Now, we do not know for certain if he won or not. He is alleging that he got a settlement from Diddy for that stuff. Again, I do not know anything about Diddy's personal health. It has not been independently verified. We are not saying by man's statements. 
He is saying that as the basis for a lawsuit. He is alleging that he got a settlement. Now, there is evidence to believe that a man that was worse than broke came into a substantial amount of money and started buying real estate. Now, whether that came from the settlement, did he? I don't know. He then said that he that he, that he had taped one of their encounters. He alleges that there was 15 encounters that he had with Diddy and Cassie. He described what those encounters looked like. He said that in one of those encounters, at least, oh, I'm sorry, there were 15 encounters, and I believe he is alleging that he had taped something like 13 of them. He had turned it over. However, one of the tapes, somehow they had accidentally either given it back to him or forgotten to take it, right? And he says that that's what he is holding as his evidence. And he says that Mark Galagos, Garagos, Diddy, and Rick Ross, don't ask me how he's involved, he's sending to actually, he has been, in his words, threatened by them to intimidate them, to intimidate him because he knows so much. I'll tell you more of the backstory, but let's just get through this. Oh, you're, what you did, you didn't talk to him before? Nothing. Nothing. He knows nothing. He didn't know, he was actually worried about me. He's like, hey, what's up? And I told him, look. He's talking about his neighbor right now. His neighbor's like his only friend, especially after he got arrested for what he did. Man, what's happening is he's trying to cool things down, but then the the feds have been harassing him. The feds. I mean, well, what, well, what's they, he they have a big file of me like this. The feds. Uh -huh. Since because P. Diddy and Mark Garibas have been trying to set me up and lock me up as an extortionist asking for money. It was not so. My settlement was breached and my settlement terms is view. One was called peaceful enjoyment. That means that it, if I went to your house or I did something, you'd actually pay me the full amount. I get all that. So I, I've been going through that since like 2012. Okay. So. All right. And, and Gonzalez knows about that. You talked to him about that kind of stuff? I talked to him alone because he's the only one that knows since the beginning. Gotcha. And then my ex-wife, she knows she saw the contract. She has a contract, a picture of a contract. All right, you guys. Now, this is the part we really have to talk about. Let me just fast forward and see if I see. Is it getting to this part? Hold on. Which is an elite group, okay? Okay, so let me just tell y'all why this is the sixth sense, okay? Because after this, I know y'all always be rolling your eyes, but he starts talking about billionaires and elite groups, okay? Now, just listen to this for 30 seconds, and then I'm going to give you guys the plot twist because it's actually really chilling. Hold on. Andrea Britt, thank you so much for the super chat. Based on Trump, okay, because he used to belong to their side you understand he used to belong to that illuminated group that i told you about which is an elite group okay of individuals which run the whole country all okay. right all right um basically what i did did you tell him how I, did you explain him about the message or no, please, please please elaborate on thursday turning to friday basically right. why because they want the united states the corruption from the system. He's letting them stay due to uh, I'm skipping due to money, basically. Because they all like making money. That's why they're all billionaires, etc. So there's only a few, there's select few of that run the country. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um. So if you, I know you may or may not, I know you're gonna believe me. Um. You have what's called the Illuminati. Illuminati. Um, Illuminati. Illuminati. Okay. Yeah, Illuminati. Okay. okay. They made it in dance. Basically what it means, illuminated. Okay. Okay. Um, they do satanic ritual abuse, abuse, which is basically CIA mind programming techniques mm -hmm. to their own family, kids, uh, etc. on the crew. And they bond that way. The Illuminati card games. Exam, okay? You look at the, the, the game, the Illuminati card game? I'm not familiar with it, so help me understand. It's a card. Okay, so really quick, and then I'm gonna like jump in, right? Because he's going into this Illuminati stuff, and I know I'm always like, God, can you guys stop with the Illuminati? But you guys, here's the weird thing. And again, my blood was running cold.
he starts talking about this Illuminati card game that they play, these billionaires that Diddy hangs around, okay? Now, if you guys don't know, Rebecca Mercer is, uh, she's, is it Rob Mercer? What's his name? He's like one of the richest, most powerful people in the world. He's not like Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk that like literally need movies made after them. He is just whatever. Rebecca Mercer is not only so powerful, but she owns and controls some of the biggest entertainment and media. Okay. Rebecca Mercer is also super, super tight with um, Burkle. That is Diddy's fairy god sugar daddy or whatever you want to call him okay rebecca mercer okay i found to be like what game is he talking about right there's a game called it's a parlor game at rebecca uh at rebecca mercer's has no get out of jail free card let me just get this this isn't a plot twist but i thought this was like really interesting for you guys to know because like again the one question i had is if this stuff can be believed. How could he still be out there? Because there's only two options. You either have very powerful people protecting you or everybody's lying and you're innocent and public opinion just doesn't like you. It can only go two ways. There's no like middle ground in it. You guys know what I'm saying? Anyway, let's read about Rebecca Bursar. Um, They're saying they are a white wing family. Listen, the Mercers are big. The Mercers are huge. People said that the movie, uh, not the movie, the TV show Succession was loosely based off of the Mercer family. They are huge. They are powerful. They control so much media. They control so much for politics. And the godfather of Diddy's children is super tight with them, okay? They said... His daughter, Rebecca, who runs the family's foundation, now has a way to relive the thrill of the campaign with friends around her dinner table. In March, on a ski vacation at a rented house near Val, Colorado, she bought a bunch, a batch of copies of Rules of Play. This is a card game that she actually made. She invented, right? Okay. For an elaborate parlor game called of rules of play for an elaborate parlor game called machine learning president. Now this guy is talking about, they have these cards, they do this, they do that. Keep in mind what he's saying because it's part of the plot twist. Essentially, it's a race to the Oval Office in three 15 minute rounds. It's a role playing game, more like assassin than like Monopoly. Although players of this game do start with an allotment of cash to spend on pushing their agendas, which can include algorithmic policing and mass deportation. Oh, it's not over. She literally said, um, oh, so, so she gave the, the people that wrote this article, this I believe was in the New Yorker, um, said, <clears throat> and I quote, tonight, the name of the game is power. That's what reads on the first page of rules of play. Each player, it goes on, will assume a new political identity. Instead of becoming Colonel Mustard or Mrs. Peacock, which is traditionally in the game Clue, okay, each player takes on the role of a political candidate or a faction in the game's parlance. Among the visible roles are Mike Pence, Elizabeth Warren, Black Lives Matter, Russia, Y Combinator, Tom Steyer, Wall Street, Evangelicals, the Koch Network, and even Robert Mercer himself, okay? Through a lawyer, Rebecca Mercer acknowledged possessing the game's rules of play really was illegal. So they weren't even supposed to see a copy and they weren't supposed to possess it. But listen to what he says about this game. And again, it sounds a little wacky, but just hear it out and then I'll connect the dots. We're almost at the big reveal, I swear. Hold on. Let's get into this. Oh, I actually. Yeah, it's called. Hold on. There's a card game. That tells exactly what their agenda is. Gotcha. It's called mental pre-program. That means that you predispose already once you play this, your mind. So you predispose at this happening. It's not like a hidden agenda, which they try to make it open to our eyes 
but we can we really don't see it. We're so busy working. It's kind of like oh, uh, hidden in plain sight. It's hidden. Uh, yeah, I think I see what you're saying. Okay. okay, how do I know this? Yeah, that's what I want to know. How do you know this? Do you know Sean Combs? Puff Daddy. Yeah. P Diddy, whatever you call himself yeah. these days. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, he's part of what's called the boule. The boule. The boule is a branch of the Illuminati. Okay. It's the black people. Okay. Uh, I'm from Africa, so I'm not a racist. Okay. Okay, you're my brother, so I like black people. Okay. My my mom, I was raised by a by an African woman in my house. Okay? okay. She was just a server, but she was my my she you know took care of. Me. Right. So I love black people. Okay. Okay. Okay, you guys, are y'all ready for the plot twist? Are y'all ready for the big reveal? Are y'all ready for the percolator? What plot twist y'all want first? I want to know what plot twist do y'all want to hear first? Right? What plot twist? First of all, let's should we check YouTube and see if the Nancy Drew person is that's always like mysteriously researching the exact same things I do and posting it 30 minutes to five hours or I do. Do y'all want to see if they figured out the plot twist? That's right, baby. If you go on mine for my content without giving me the respect that you give the male YouTubers, then baby. You're going to have to work. You're going to have to get these Easter eggs, baby. And they're buried. So let's get to this plot twist, shall we? Here's the plot twist. Let's go over what we've already heard. Okay? Let's play a game of clues, shall we? He talks about this game called The Rules of Play, right? And let's line it up. It's The Rules of Play. He said it's called machine programming. They said that the game is called machine learning. Machine programming, machine learning, fine. But this game exists. And one of the, Robert Mercer, right? One of the most powerful, if you don't know what it is, Google it. I didn't put it in my PowerPoint presentation because I assumed everybody knew who Robert Mercer was. But if not, I can do it different. Robert Mercer, one of the most powerful, richest men in the world. And one of, if not the most powerful men in politics and US media, right? Robert Mercer, uh, hold on. Now when I get text, I get scared. Yes, I did. I did. Okay, so Robert Mercer, one of the most powerful people in media, made this game that this man's talking about, machine learning. Okay, he just described almost everything verbatim that Cassie describes in her legal filing for free calls. The legal filing that she filed in 2023. He described everything, everything, down to the thing. He described the filming. He described the tapes. He described it. He is also an escort with a very popular South Florida escort agency. He looked better than he's seen some things now. We'll get to that. He described everything. He down to even Diddy drinking too much of the liquid coca because that's what he liked. Cassie in her complaints said Diddy had a problem with it. He describes the taping. He describes the yacht. He describes where it happens. He describes Chirac. We can see that he was on the scene. He's talking about Diddy. He's talking about Rick Ross. He's talking about even, I don't know how DJ Khaled got in there, but do we need to look into that? He's saying all these things that if you've been paying attention, line up perfectly to Cassie's complaint. A bitch. Here's the thing, right? He's saying this under, well, it's not under oath, but he's saying this in custody for interrogation because he got arrested for walking into a building, right? And shooting that B up, okay? He got arrested for that. He was driven to the point of insanity. And a lot of people said that when he was taken into custody, he looked like he was zonked out of his mind. So if this guy sound because I'm going to put the whole interview in my, uh, in the description box. I just wanted to show it to you guys first, you know, before the vulture, 
picked up the crumbs, right? I just wanted to show it to you guys first, but I will cite my sources and put the whole uh, 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 finished video. It's gonna be a little hard to find though, if you haven't been doing your research. So why someone that when you listen to it, sounds like he's out of his mind. When he's in court, when you see him with the judge, he looks like he has two sheets to the wind. He is talking about Illuminati, card games, all this stuff. He's talking about Diddy, Cassie, the freak offs. Now, I know what some of y'all will say, right? I know what some of y'all will say. Well, okay, Tisa, a random crazy person is talking about the stuff that Cassie had in her complaint. What's the big deal? The big MF and deal is, okay, we've all seen this video. This video's been around for a while. This video was filmed. This video was filmed from the police. This is an official court document about his confession for bang banging up a place. It was filmed. Confession given. All this information about Diddy Cassie, what they're into, the information that lines up almost verbatim to her complaint from 2023. This was filmed by the police in 2018. This was filmed, did I break my microphone? This was filmed in 2018. When this was filmed, you see even the way the, 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 the police officer, the detective is like, yeah, I got it, I got it, I got it. You can keep going, you can keep going. Because when he was saying this in 2018, no one believed him. Everybody thought he was crazy. Everybody thought he was insane. Everybody thought he was out of his mind. Tell me how. This mofo described in detail, every single detail about what Cassie said happened in the F-offs. Tell me how he did that. How? Could he predict the future? Was he nurse of dramas? This card game that he says the rich billionaire elites have, this game was invented or at least put on, ma on the market a year after this confession was given. How would he know that? Does he write for The Simpsons? Does he know the future? What's going on? You guys, this is a taped confession of a man who claims, and you heard him earlier, that they would ply him with bum, 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 bum. Diddy would do all this stuff, make him do this with Cassie. Why he watched and then Diddy would join? He, was, he said it. I am basically Diddy's and Cassie's blank slave. That's what they had me there for. He said he had 15 encounters. He, I think he said 13 of them were filmed. If it wasn't 13, he said at least one was filmed. How the F did he predict the future five years later that Miss Cassie Ventura came and basically said what was going on happened verbatim? And you can be like, okay, T, so that don't prove nothing. Okay, well, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do if that's not enough for you. And I'm not trying to prove anything. What I am trying to do is bring you my research, bring you what chills my blood, bring you what makes me be like, hold on, bring you what makes you question what we're fed, what reality is, who's telling the truth, who's lying, who's doing the motherfucking research, right? But all jokes aside, that's what it is. So I ask of ye, and I'm gonna turn to the chat. Tell, this is a taped police confession. Remember when I said, I told y'all this wasn't clickbait. I don't know why you guys doubt me. And you know I love sharing tea with you guys. Y'all go hard for me, so I love going hard for y'all. And I love finding, going down the rabbit hole. Why y'all think I didn't even post that much today? Cause I was getting my last pieces of evidence. Y'all. And y'all can be like, oh my God, Diddy said that nothing that happened in the freak house are true. Maybe not, but I know he settled with Cassie less than 24 hours later. I know he settled with Cassie in the 11th hour, I think on November 16. I know he settled with Cassie. So at the end of the day, right? We don't know whether Diddy is innocent or not. I tend to believe that people settling that quickly for allegedly that much tend not to be innocent. However, I don't know how things go with the billionaire class because I don't sit around and play parlor games. Tell me how this man, and I'm going to give you his identity now so y'all can know how he was driven crazy. 
described everything that Diddy and Cassie did. Now, mind you, this man, this is 2018. He had lost his mind. Um, I believe they said he settled around 2014. So listen, four years of going crazy and hard living and being passed around like a party favor, I guess it does something to you. But tell me how he predicted the future. Tell me now in 2018, he's recounting shit that happened in 2014 that is exactly in line with what Cassie said in 2023. Legal documents already showed that to you, showed you all the receipts, showed you all the connections, everything sure. Tell me how this mofo predicted the future. I believe we do have one of Diddy's blank workers in a police interrogation making his confession as to what Diddy's into, what happened, and whatever. But the interview goes on longer because he gets into some really deep, dark stuff about the Illuminati. It gets deep and it gets dark. And I'm not saying that everything he's saying is true, but I would like somebody to explain to me how he predicted the MF in future. In 2018, he was talking about some issue that happened in 2014, and he predicted the future that in 2023, it would be corroborated by the one Miss Cassie Ventura. All he had to do is say something, white fingernails, and I would have been like, I'm done. Tell me how. See, this is research. This is being nosy. This is standing on, right? This is what I live for. But y'all, honestly, uh, listen, I know I'm having fun doing my video victory lap because honestly, when I found this, when I read this, when I saw the video, I was just like, oh my God, I'm not gonna lie. It did send chills down my throat. It did make me feel like, you know me, I live for the mess. Y'all know I love researching, right? Y'all know it. I do. Like, I just do. I was always a kid. I love. I was always reading Nancy Drew. Like, I do. But it literally, for the first time, made me feel like, when you hear the whole interview, that there are some heavy, strong powers at play. And Puffy being able to get away with this, if he is guilty, has not been proven in a court of law, I have it upon information and belief. Also, what I'm basing my opinion on is a mixture of blogs, newspapers, articles between 2001 and 2018, Cassie's complaint from 2023, and of course, his actual tape confession from the loony bin with the Miami-Dade uh, detectives, please, which I found for you guys, right? Um, I happen to believe him, maybe when Diddy comes out, and also based off the fact that he was less than broken and he was buying properties cash around the time that he said that Diddy settled with him. Now, I do want to say this. Diddy has not had a chance in court. We cannot take this as fact. However, what I'd like to do is bring you what I show you my research method, show you how I fall down the rabbit hole. Sometimes I show you what my sources bring to me. But even then, I do independently verify the stuff that sources, like a lot of people do. I do, and I, and I know a lot of YouTubers do that. I'm just telling you what I do. I do independently verify what my sources bring to me before I present it to you, just to see, is there any evidence more likely than not that what they're saying is even in the realm of reality? This man is from South Florida, he is, and the police report does say in all the headlines, which I will read to you, that he is a uh, stripper and an escort, that he worked for a place called the Dancing Bear. The Dancing Bear specialty was when women paid to have blank with them. He got paid for Diddy to watch. He said, again, 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 when I did this, I'm not going to lie, it really did send chills down my, it really did send chills uh, down my back. And it made me feel like, okay, this is gossip 100%. But the just to continue my earlier point, the way Diddy was able, if you believe he got away with things for so long, it wasn't by accident. People talk about why didn't Cassie say anything. People talk about why didn't the men say anything. But when you actually go down the rabbit hole of who propped Diddy up and the way he was basically chosen to be the new Bulea, if you want to believe his things about the Illuminati and the black Illuminati are called the Bulea, Bulea, I mean, if you want to believe that, then Diddy was chosen 
right? Given that gold star. And maybe it's so heavy and it's so far reaching that people aren't speaking because they, one, know how powerful, but it's so deep. It really, honestly, when I listened to the whole interview, it really gave me chills because I was like, yo, like, I don't know, it's just scary. Like, what are you getting into? Who is actually involved? How deep does this go? Mark Garagos has gotten Diddy out of everything. Diddy even insulted a college professor, basically, and nothing happened. Which, by the way, did you know that Burkle, right? Remember when Justin was supposed to go to Harvard, but he decided to go to UCLA on a football scholarship? And I was like, how did Justin Combs, this is a side note, but let me just get this. I was like, how did Justin Combs get a football scholarship? I mean, I'm not saying, but he is not built for a football for football and judging by what his coach says he don't got the speed for football right so how did he get there i did a little digging and it looked like puffy's fairy godfather ron burkle who's financed his whole life and puffed him up uh literally is one of ucla's biggest donors he had the queen and king, I think of Jordan or Jim or something like that, actually visiting the international relations school that he built. He is a heavy hitter at UCLA. And it looks like he might have put a good word in and got Justin in there and on a football scholarship. That might have been why when Justin was, I guess, not doing good in practice and the coach started cursing him out while Diddy was watching, you know, football coaches, come on, come on, move, 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 because he wasn't taking his fitness seriously and the coach thought that Justin was being so slow. Now, listen, the coach could have been whatever Diddy thought he was, but Diddy then proceeded upon himself to go and try to Steve, according to the coach, to try to Steve stout the coach. He literally cornered the coach in the office and tried to crack his head open with a kettle ball and assaulted a coach. This And again, I know it's a coach, but you are basically a professor because even the coaches in college are professors. All this stuff happened. Not a charge was dropped. Not a charge was filed against Diddy. Let's not forget that according to everyone, since everybody wants to do, oh my God, it's mod. Since you want to do your research, you can Google and see that Ron Burkle owns, uh, not owns, sorry, but he is a heavy hitter with UCLA. A heavy hitter. I would imagine that he could get somebody admitted if he wanted. I can imagine that he could make sure that people did. I, I don't know. I don't know. This is all my speculation, but I just find it weird the way there are so many interconnected things. And again, can somebody explain to me how a man in a police confession from 2018 that used to be a heavy escort and stripper that himself said that he had blank with people in the South Florida area during the same years that Diddy and Cassie were basically living in Florida and Diddy was hosting private parties at his Miami estate. Again, I showed you guys all the receipt. This again, do we were we there? Do we actually know what happened? No, but I don't know. What do you guys think? Hold on, I have a few more tw twists and turns because I have some information from my sources that when I got the video, I wanted to shake some trees and see who could cooperate and give me even more background. So now you guys have the skeleton. You have the bones of what I've been given. Didn't I tell you this was a six cent plot twist? Didn't I tell you? Because again, when I was just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But then I looked at the timestamp and I was like, oh my God, you, you predicted this five years before? How, how could he lie about that? How can he know? I mean, anything's possible, baby. He needs to write for TV because he's predicting the future. He needs a job with um, the Simpsons. So anyway, right? Um, yeah, I'm going to read you what the sources say because now you have the skeleton and the bones. And then when I talk to my sources, baby, they put the meat on this mug. They put the flesh on top of the bones, right? And then we're going to move on. But let me just get through these super chats really good. Beauty Inspired, did I thank you for the super chat? If I didn't, thank you again. Andrea Britt, thank you so much. You said new here, uh, new here, my content's fire. Thank you so much. Kathy W, thank you so much for the super chat. B said that you guys are trying to diddy me. Why are you trying to have a YouTube freak off on my channel? B says that there's 8K in the chat and only 1.2 um, likes in the chat. Please light up that like button. Why are you trying to have a, a, a YouTube freak off on me? 
Why are y'all doing this? Just using and abusing my research. And y'all think you, you guys don't even want to hit the like button. All right. If you don't hit the like button, can y'all at least share? Also, I have some more research that I am dropping tomorrow night. I would drop it now, but I'm like, no, right? Like, what did she say? Oh my God, you guys, this is mad. This is mad. Like, I do independent research. We just happened. Me and my friend just happened. Yeah, really? Everybody's so creative. Baby, let's see what you do with your Nancy Drew mess. I'm going to set a timer and see when it pops up. I'm going to set a timer. And I do what, you know what, y'all don't care. But I do, find, you know what? Let's just, everybody's so creative. Anyway, y'all. Um, journey to Taj. Thank you so much for the super sticker. Hey, uh, Clementine Yadira. Oh, I love that profile picture. Thank you for joining the channel. I'm going to get to my source of stuff. I just want to like, you know, show love to everyone that's showing me love. Nikki, Nikki. Thank you so much for joining the channel. Holly said, you're awesome. Tisa, the yoga preacher said, thank you for your trusted research. I come here for facts in the last. Oh, thank you. You listen, y'all know, I like to put on a podcast because my favorite thing is putting in a podcast <clears throat> and then starting to organize the closet, even though 20 minutes into it, I just lay down on the floor on top of the clothes and just finish listening to my podcast, right? Tori said, Terry said, thank you, Terry. Do you think, Tisa, all the pieces over all these years are coming all together? Everyone is called opportunistic, crazy, or liars. Checkmate, mofo. That's the crazy thing, because I'm not gonna lie, I kind of remember when I tell you who this guy is, you guys are going to be like, oh, I remember that happening. Well, I'm about to get into who he is, reveal the, not reveal my sources, but give the big reveal. When you find out who this guy is, you're going to be like, oh my God, I know who that guy is, right? The thing is, um, when this happened, everybody thought he was lying. Everybody thought he was crazy. Even the detective was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like whatever, move on. Right. Everybody was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, y'all, um, who else do I have? Oh, thank you. Kelsey K. Thank you so much for the super chat. Chiona. Lawrence, Lawrenson, thank you so much. You said, question, are there any photos of this man from back in the day before he had the breakdown? I actually do have one photo of him, but that's after. I have a photo of him, but it's his mugshot. So it's after he had bing, 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 bing. Um, hold on. What did I, I am looking for an actual photo of him when he was actually an escort because the other thing I have is the mugshot. This is after he, I guess, you know, he had like, you know, you know how those barbers be working magic where you go in a little bowl, but they sprinkle the stuff in. But then after being held in the jail because he shot, he bang banged up a place. So it's not like he could just go to trial. Like they had him in custody until he go to trial. So whatever he was putting in his hair. But I am looking for a picture when he was in all his glory. However, he was a stripper and an escort for this place called uh, the Dancing Bear. It was very, very popular for what well, I always thought it was for like gay people. Cause I'm like, what women are paying for a man to come and F them and their friends. I'm like, you can just pick somebody up from bar. Like, please men, not saying all men, but a lot of men don't have standards. Like, let's be real. You can offer them a, a bite, not even the whole little Debbie pie. You can offer them a bite of your little, little Debbie pie and they be waiting like ladies who's first, you know? So, um, he was the dancing bear. You can Google it. It was a popular, don't Google it on your work computer. Please don't. You don't, you don't want that in your search engine. But I think it was called the, you can put dancing bear escort or dancing bear. But, but they were hired to literally have blank with women um, and their partners could watch. Or as he said, or alleges, did he actually joined in? Okay. Um, but I will look for a, a, a picture when he was with all his glory. Um, 50 shades of dysfunction in the black community said journalist skills are fire. Thank you. Eminem, thank you so much for blessing me with the super chat. And what Tasha Wilson said, I thought it was just me who went down the YouTube rabbit hole. Keep up the good work, baby. We are twins. You know, not even YouTube. I go down Twitter. I go down Google. I go MSNBC, CNBC, baby. Y'all know, but you know, that's what it is, right? That's what it is. So, right? 
Listen, oh no, you guys, sorry. Um, my nose is red because I am coming down with a cold, but that's because literally somebody, I don't wanna say someone, an adorable little kid literally sneezed in my face a few times. So yes, I am coming down with something, but I'm going to keep standing here until I go down with the ship, all right? Uh, listen, I'm gonna keep standing here until I go down with the ship. Um, Ashley said, Tisa for press secretary in the White House. And also Lindsay believes survivors, PPCM from YouTube Watch. Thank you so much for the super chat. And thank you so much for your concern, y'all. But listen, ain't nothing that NyQuil uh, won't fix. Don't worry about that. Um, oh, really quick, let me just get to, and I'll read the source. So Tanya Lewis, thank you so much. Said, Thanks for bringing receipts and keeping us informed. Okay, so let's get to the other part, okay? Um, my, uh, source stuff. Hold on. But literally, let me read the chat real quick. Tell me why. Does anybody know why he predicted the future? Do y'all, <laughs> somebody said Rudolph just on time for Christmas. Why was my brother calling me Rudolph the other day? Yeah, the cold is going around. I have been drinking lemon and tea. I have, but like, it'll, it'll, now I'm like, oof, come on, tighten up. Listen, you know I already put some Vicks on it. Please, I'd be bathing in Vicks vapor rub. And I got some Canada dry ginger ale. And I got some saltine crackers and some chunky chicken noodle soup just in case it takes me down. For some reason, that will fix everything, right? Listen, okay. So let's get into what other... So this is what my sources actually said this, said to me. Okay. Wait, hold on. I'm getting more information. <gasps> Do you guys want some breaking news? I just got some breaking news. Do you guys want some breaking news? Oh, wow. Y'all, Diddy's going down. I know we all say that. I just got some breaking news from my source. My source was texting me and saying, I better not say their MFing name, right? I won't, right? Because they'd be thinking I'm getting a thing. But I'll make a video about this. Hold on. That's my source texting me, right? Okay, I'm gonna make a video about it. You guys, turn your notifications on. I swear to God, tomorrow morning, uh, by like before noon Eastern Standard Time, I'll have the video up, y'all. My when I say that I've been researching, when I say that I've been shaking trees, when I say I've been getting everybody I can and pulling every, because again, you know how it is with gossip. People like to talk. When I say that I've been doing it. Listen, I'm going I'm going to have to confirm with uh my source how much I can say. But I guarantee you this, nobody's been reporting on this one. Nobody saw that angle coming. You know, I I mean, God did, but he's the only one. God saw it coming, but he is the only one. Okay, hold on. Let me get this mess going to actually read what my source said. Um Okay, so this man, if you want to know, he was, because remember when I said, uh, you guys are going to know who I'm talking about when I tell you who it is, okay? Um, they said, it's like Tisa, right? I'm not saying all this is true, okay? This is when I was just like, yo, can you tell, this person works in politics, why does that have anything to do? They also, uh, a different source works in fashion. Another person works in entertainment. Remember I said that I always like three different points, right? Now, the politic person wouldn't tell me anything because, you know, they don't. But they did confirm that at the time that this man was taken into custody, 
he looked like he was high out of his mind. If you guys don't know, um, this man is Jonathan Odidi, O-D, O-D-D-I. He was arrested, right? Because he broke into, um, I don't know if you guys, I don't know if you guys remember the news, uh, but a story broke a few years back about a guy that broke into the Trump Doral Hotel lobby and he started pewing, 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 shooting up the club. Okay. Um, I'd be surprised if anybody actually remembered this, but if you're into politics, you know exactly who this is. At the time, it was a super, super, super weird story. So when you add in that research, you learn that Odie, it's either Adi, Odie, right? Was an exotic dancer at the same place that Caesar Sayak danced. If you guys don't know Caesar Sayak, he was like a Trump fanatic. He was like mailing stuff to people that got the feds involved. It doesn't matter, right? Remember them? Both of them loved Donald Trump. Both worked as exotic dancers at a place called the Dancing Beer. And both were on steroids. So even though you guys don't see it here, he was allegedly a hot piece, right? Again, people are saying that upon information and belief, Odie won a large settlement against Diddy for basically saying that Diddy gave Odie the gift that keeps on giving, if you know what I mean. Anyway, this is the police interrogation video where he makes a lot of claims against Diddy and Cassie, and he makes the claims five years early, okay? Now, you can say that anybody... Oh, hold on a second. Hey, I'm on live. I got your message, though. I know, I'm going to call you as soon as I'm done because I want to know how much I can actually say. <laughs> You're keeping the lights on with the YouTube channel. <laughs> Yo, I'm going to call you. I'm going to call you as soon as the live's over. You're going to tell me how much I can say because maybe this has to go on the video. Okay? Bye. I'll call you back. Okay. So, right? Um... Okay. So, anyway, listen. Another person I said talked to that had knowledge said, listen, anybody can sit off the street can make claims about anybody. But what's different about uh 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 what's different about this is Odie seems to have predicted the future. Plus, people have it on good information and knowledge and authority that Diddy actually played Odie a settlement after Odie sued him. So Odie sued him in court and then it went to settlement. Okay. There are numerous threads on Twitter if people want to research about that asset uh, aspect. But again, you guys, if you listen to the interrogation video, he does sound crazy. But he does corroborate a lot of what Cassie says. Okay? And the police interrogation video, once again, this is what people are like sending me. I have like a billion text or, or, was messages going at the same time. Was recorded several years ago. They said again, I don't want you to think that anyone should believe everything he says. Because again, he gets into Illuminati. He gets into like satanic sacrifice. He gets into blood ritual. He gets into that's the way the Illuminati um, uh, bond with their family and we ones. I don't know. It gets, it, it gets, it gets, it gets whatever, right? But they say that we don't know. I'm not saying that everything this man says is true. but. Hold on. Hold on. I just click. Gosh dang it. Okay. He said, I'm not saying, uh, listen, I'm not saying you should believe everything that he's saying is true. Okay. Another person says, I believe that he is under the influence of something. That's when I was like, oh, MK Ultra. It's very obvious when you look at it that, and if you were in the moment, that something had a hold on him. Now, the weird thing is, this guy also owned a mineral mining company called Pegasus Minerals, okay? And get this, the government, for some weird reason, took ownership 
of his mineral mining company, Pegasus Minerals, basically, honestly, left him bankrupt and desolate to the point of he had to start working as a personal trainer. Yeah. A funny thing is, if you watch the full interview and you hear about what this guy did for a living, at first I was like, oh, personal trainer. He starts running down. He worked at um, developing the first virtual reality microchip. He had his own mineral mining company. He did so much stuff for him to kind of turn out tweaking and working as a personal trainer. I'm just saying, right? Um, again, it hasn't been independently confirmed that the government took ownership of it, but somehow along the way he lost it and it was just weird. It was actually a family business. His dad actually had it. How do you go from basically being like a rich trust fund kid to being like, well, look at him in the interrogation. He's broken. Okay, right? They're saying that, uh, again, one person said, listen, I've spent hours one day trying to figure this out. I just can't make heads or tells of it. The video is crazy. Okay? Now, blah, 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 blah. Hold on one second. I'm skipping over stuff. Again, the one person I reached out to is said, listen, be careful, Tisa. You're too nosy for your own good. But I will let you know that if people care to investigate more than Diddy and Cassie and more than the salaciousness, the one thing I pay attention to, if I felt like it, is that Odie mentions that card game. He calls it pre-programming. However, there's an article about that card game in the New York magazine that came around, that came out around like some 2000, somewhere in the two, uh, past 2017. It's called My Machine Learning President. And it was about the Mercers having a card game too. Okay. It's just wild that he mentions this. Again, maybe he's not talking about the Mercers card game, but it sounds too on the nose. It just sounds too on the lows. Again, the headline that this man came into our collective consciousness is alleged Trump Durrell gunman Jonathan Odie went from, can I say dead broke? Dead broke to a property buying spree in over one month. This was actually reported by in, uh, uh, NBC Miami the Miami Herald, actually every major paper in Miami covered it, but also every single May. And this was while Trump was president. He shot up one of his properties um, and it went to being covered nationally. Everybody tried to make this man seem like he was crazy. He was out of his mind. He said those things that he experienced broke, to, broke him. Again, somebody said, um, somebody said this, right? What's, and th again, this is all allegedly, I, this has not been independently verified. I'm just telling you what the streets are saying. You have the evidence. I will put a link. I encourage you to make your own mind up, okay? I'm not trying to push my opinion off as fact. And I'm not making any assertions as to anybody's physical health or even mental health at all. I will say that this is based upon my information and belief I've received off of blogs, news articles, sources, right? which are mine to have, and also the police interrogation video, okay? Another person said, I think it's weird that this interrogation wasn't sent to investigators in New York. Again, it's not a court filing. It's not under oath. But, right? But um, one of his other lawyers is a guy that runs a political organization. It's kind of the, like the Lincoln Project, but mm, whatever, right? Um, they're super pro-Democrat. They have married Trump on all the time. Um, oh, so anyway, the interrogation video, I'll put a link into it. Um, it's, uh, I think it's WRP. A uh, shout out to WRP channel. I'll put the link directly so you guys can watch the full video and you can share it with people. Um, again, they, this guy that actually posted the video uh, used to work with Michael Jackson's attorney, Mark Garagos. 
I think Diddy just presented some award to him recently. He's a big shot. That Odie guy keeps mentioning his name. Oh, wait, sorry. I got it mixed up. What am I saying, right? The Odie guy talks about Mark Garagos and then the Mark Benhaman or whatever. That is um, the other one of Diddy's lawyers is a guy that runs a political organization. It's super big. It's kind of like the Lincoln Project. It's really pro-democratic. They have Mary Trump on all the time. If you guys don't know, Mary Trump used to always talk trash about Donald Trump and they would bring her out to kind of discredit him. Um, I think Diddy, Diddy just presented this guy who used to be the head of legal at Bad Boy Entertainment, Ben bah bah Bahanas or whatever, right? The guy mentioned him in the video. Um, Diddy just presented an award to him recently. He's a big shot. That Odie guy keeps mentioning his name in the police interrogation, okay? But you, the video is old. It's like from 2017. But it's like, right? Again, 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 again. Y'all, listen, what do y'all think? Shout out to my sources. Shout out for blessing me with all this. What do you guys think? What do you guys think? What do y'all guys think? I really honestly need to know. Oh, I have more information, right? Here's the thing, how, oh, so this is what one of my sources said. This is the last thing I think is important you guys hear because this is like a kicker. So you know how there's always these rumors that like the Illuminati or whoever will give you something that makes you lose your mind. One of the things that was so shocking about this guy when he went, everybody said he was the nicest, sweetest guy. He even had a best friend who was his neighbor. Then when he found out, was like, wait, what? How's that happen? nobody actually believed he did it because it was so out of his character. And mind you, he had lived in the South Florida area all his life. When he was taken into custody, he looked like he was out of his mind. And even when he talks in the interview, it sounds like he's talking nonsense. But now that we know what we know, it corroborates a lot that was said. Listen to this mess. Um, they said... Okay, so my source said also, please don't mention my name. It's not like anything will happen, but I thought it was kind of big, but these people are scary, okay? This guy was a dancer at the same place Caesar was, okay? Do you remember that guy he had a white van with all the Trump MAGA stickers all over it, and he was sending things in the mail? They both worked in a place called the Dancing Bear. I think programming people... I think they were both on steroids, but they were, but they were both, I think on drugs. I don't know, but definitely when you watch the video of closed captions, right. And when you read along with the transcript, okay, it just hit me. Yo, when this happened, it was so stupid, crazy out of the, like just out of realm. I knew there was more to it. And when I saw this guy in court, his court appearance and his eyes are bugging out of his head. I knew something more was up until, I mean, listen, you got to research. At the time, the narrative was he was obsessed with Melania and that's why he did it. And then you can even find interviews with his neighbors online. I mean, it's crazy. The guy was just mad. Odie was making breakfast. All of a sudden, out the blue, he's making breakfast with his best friend. Making breakfast. That's what he's known to. He made breakfast for anybody that wanted it, right? He was a little bit of cook. I researched that, yes. He was making breakfast. Out of the blue, he runs out of his apartment to the Trump Lobby Door Hotel, right? And starts bang, 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 bang. The, pl the police bang, banged him twice. This happened out of blue. So imagine you making eggs and all of a sudden, almost like you've been programmed, he drops what he's doing and runs over there. This is breakfast in the morning. It made no sense. Even his closest friends were like, what the, what happened? Okay. But. Yeah. Yeah. They said. The reporters couldn't understand how he got the money. People, like, I looked into it. That money trail popped up over nothing. 
They said somewhere exists court records or documents of him being paid a settlement from Sean Combs because that's how he was able to buy all the distressed properties. He's crazy, but I think he believes exactly what he's saying. I don't think he's intentionally lying. I just think the guy's got stuff on board for sure, aka he's on one and there's always smoke when there's fire. I find it interesting. He has the same attorney, right? Mark Garagos as Jesse Smollett. The other attorneys of Diddy, according to this guy, are the same brothers that started the media, the media, Midas Touch, Medias Touch Network. I think it's Midas Touch. Anyway, they're saying it's pretty powerful. Um, again, people have seen, the people that know have seen this video a million times. Um, they compete with the Lincoln Project guys. The main dude interviewed Joe Biden last weekend okay the people the people the people the people so anyway y'all what do y'all think were y'all entertained oh also they're saying another person confirmed that they heard it on good belief or authority that the guy had a blank video or a copy of it so they made him look crazy about as crazy as it gets to discredit him and nobody will ever believe him about anything in the future i'd say that's a pretty effective way to silence someone he does talk about all the cameras being around filming them i think he says 13 cameras filming 15 separate encounters oh right again this video is an original copy and by original copy, I'm going to put the link of the full video. It is actually on a channel. And I guys want you to see, it might be behind a paywall on Patreon, but I'll post it, right? Um, actually, it's not behind a paywall. Sorry. Um, da -da 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 -da. Anyway, you guys, listen. There is a part two to this. We have to actually talk about it. What do y'all think? I honestly want to know what y'all think. Let me just run to the comments really quick because I want to think, were you guys entertained? Did you like the big reveal? Was it clickbait? Of course it's not. Did I come through? I think I did. But what do you guys think, right? What do you guys think? What do y'all think? What do y'all think? Somebody said praying for you, Tisa, because this is not speculation. Flat. Okay, Black and Power, thank you so much. But don't say that. Y'all scare me when you'll say that. I'd be like, ha, ha fun and games. Next time, y'all going to see like, like, like YouTube chat. Let me not even put that into a existence, right? Um, Listen. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Woo. Found his Instagram account. I know that's right. You came all the way through. There we go. There we go. Excellent work. Slade, great job, great job, great job on the ball. Woo, can we talk about managing an old uh, agency service? Listen, somebody said this man calls himself the chocolate boy wonder. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. This year is going out with a bang and it looks like Puffy's mess is going to follow him into the new year because you see now Puffy got some powerful people and they are doing everything they can everything they can to make sure that he is protected. Now, let me just get through this really quick. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, thank you. Okay, here we go. Okay, Ashley said, press secretary for the White House. Thank you. Lindsay, believe again, you guys, um, you guys watch Lindsay, so believe survivors that that's the channel survive, uh, uh, please subscribe. I already like the name. Um, anyway, uh, da, 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 let's get into it. Tanya said, thanks for keep it, uh, bringing the receipts and keeping us informed. Tia said, girl, I know that's right. She said, I've been here since 40 K. Look at you girl on top. Oh, thank you. Tia. I really appreciate that. Little miss mouth. Thank you for the super chat. Mr. Red ball 71 or, uh, the Uchi Dre day. Thank you very much. Also Rhonda. Sadiqua Adash. Thank you so much for joining Rhonda Sadiqa. Uh, Sadiq. Yeah, Rhonda Sadiq. Sorry about that. Uh, Holly B said Mary Trump passed away recently. She did. Rans, uh, Rancia W, thank you so much for the super chat. M, thank you so much for joining the channel. 
Agnes said, hey, girl, with a bangang. Hey, wow, I'm loving this content. B, you said ways to support our girl. Like this live. Join. Become a member. Listen, y'all got to send me a cash app. It's cool. I don't want to have to pay the RRS any money, but thank y'all anyway. Olive oil said, great work, Inspector Tisa. Listen, thank y'all so much for joining in. I have another investigative report. Listen, we do on Vlogmas each and every day. I have an investigative report that's coming out tomorrow. I will show my work. I will show my research. Y'all, let me know what you think in the comments. Also, I will put a live directly in. I will put the link to the video in the description box for you guys to, uh, to watch in its entirety. And when you watch it, it's about 35 minute video. Please come back to the channel. I really honestly want to hear what you guys think and what you guys make sense. I know it might seem like I'm not in the comments, but I read pretty much every single comment and you guys inspire me a lot. So I really, really, really want to actually see what you guys think about it. You know, listen, we doing Scooby-Doo, um, Nancy Drew, we doing all this and it would have worked if it wasn't for us meddling kids. All right, y'all. I'll talk to y'all tomorrow. Bye.